who created you from a single soul and from it created its mate and from the pair of them spread countless men and women and be mindful of God in whose name you make requests of one another and beware of severing the ties of kinship God is always watching over you Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha wa kulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuta' allaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan amima O you who believe, be mindful of God and speak in a direct fashion to a good purpose and so that he will put your deeds right for you and forgive your sins Whoever obeys God and His Messenger will truly achieve a great triumph. Amma ba'du fa'in nas laqad hadithi kitabullah wa ahsan al-hadi hadi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharra al-umuri muhdathatuha wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah wa kullu bid'atin dhalalah wa kullu dhalalatin kunnar. Verily the most truthful speech is the Book of Allah and the best guidance is and the way of life is the guidance of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the worst things are those that are newly invented in the religion. And every newly invented thing in the religion is an innovation, a bid'ah. And every innovation is going astray, and every going astray is in fire. Rasul said in a hadith, In the yawm al jumati Sayyid al ayyami wa a'zamuha عند Allah وهو أعظم من يوم الأضحى ويوم الفطر فيه خمسة خلال خلق الله فيه آدم وأهبط الله فيه آدم إلى الأرض وفيه توفى الله آدم وفيه ساعة لا يسأل الله فيها عبد فيها العبد شيئا إلا أعطاه ما لم يسأل حراما وفيه تقوم الساعة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Friday is the best day of all of the days. It is the greatest day in the sight of Allah. It is greater in the sight of Allah than the day of Adha, Eid al-Adha, and the day of Fitr, Eid al-Fitr. It has five characteristics. On it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, and on it, Allah sent him down to earth, and on it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Adam alayhi salam pass away. And on it there is an hour or a short period of time in which a person does not ask Allah for anything except Allah would grant it to him. So long as what he has asked is nothing that is forbidden. And on it the day of judgment will begin. Based on this hadith and many others like it, it is impor important to emphasize a few points about the Friday prayer and I have chosen to make this khutbah a reminder from, for myself and everyone about the significance of this day and to point out many of the opportunities which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us by linking it to Friday. May Allah guide us to worship Him and praise Him each Friday and each day in the best way that He ordained for us. <clears throat> One of the greatest acts of worship on this day, as all of you would know, is the Friday prayer and khutbah itself, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mandatory upon every male Muslim, unless if he has an excuse for that week. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha nudiya lis salati min yawm al jum'ati fas'aw ila dhikrillah wa dharu al bay'ah. O you who believe, when the adhan is called for the prayer on the day of Jum'ah, then proceed to the remembrance of Allah and leave the trade. That is better for you if only you knew. Therefore, when it is time for the Friday prayer, a part of which is the khutbah, and we cannot disassociate the prayer from the khutbah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to leave anything that we are doing of this world and to respond to His call to worship, which is the adhan.
Additionally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made each Friday a Eid for us Muslims for each week. In the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the day of Abha and the day of Fitr a Eid for us for the whole year. Ibn Abbas reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily, Allah has made this day of Friday a celebration for the Muslims, a Eid. Whoever comes to the Friday prayer, let him bathe himself and apply perfume if he has it, and use the miswa. In Arabic, إِنَّ هَذَا يَوْمُ عِيدٍ جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ فَمَنْ جَاءَ إِلَى الْجُمْعَةِ فَلْيَسْتَقْسِلْ وَإِنْ كَانَ طِيبٌ فَلْيَلْمَسْ مِنْهُ وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسِّوَاكِ Additionally, Rasulullah said, whoever washes his head and his body, meaning performing ghusl, on Friday, then sets out early, is, pre is, present, and is present at the beginning of the khutbah, and is closed to the imam, then listens attentively for every step he takes, he will have the reward of fasting and praying qiyam for one whole year. And when we are in the masjid, we must sit in a way that does not harm others or cause any obstructions. And we must try to, and we must try our best to face the khatib and sit as close as possible to him and listen very attentively. The importance of listening attentively is re-emphasized again in another hadith where Rasulullah says, if you say to your companion, even if you say to your companion, listen attentively on a Friday when the Imam is delivering the khutbah, then you have engaged in idle speech. Meaning that even if you turn to the person sitting next to you and you just tell him, please listen attentively to the khatib, even that, because you've said something while the khatib is speaking and you yourself have not listened to the khatib, then even that Rasulullah is called idle speech. May Allah guide us to all what He loves and keep us away from all what He dislikes. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا فيا فوز المستغفرين أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى In this second part of the khutbah, I will briefly touch on three additional acts of worship uh, other than the Friday prayer itself, which are also great acts of worship on any day but they have a special emphasis and the reward is multiplied when they are performed on Friday. Um, the first of which is mentioned in a hadith where Rasulullah says, إِنَّ مِنْ أَفْضَلِ أَيَّامِكُمْ يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ فَأَكْثِرُوا عَلَيَّ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ فِيهِ فَإِنَّ صَلَاتَكُمْ مَعْرُوضَةٌ عَلَيْهِ The Messenger of Allah, uh, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Amongst the best of your days is Friday. On, on that day, pray to Allah to exalt my mention frequently, for your supplications are presented to me. Therefore, on Fridays, we must make a conscious effort to send salawat on the Prophet again and again throughout the day, especially when we're walking to the masjid and coming back from the masjid. There are good opportunities instead of talking about the dunya or anything else, we should take that time for dhikr and take that time so that we remember to send salawat on the Prophet 
And Rasul emphasizes that the supplications we perform are presented to him. So imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only will bless you with additional reward for sending supplications, but also he will present your supplications of the Prophet to the Prophet. <clears throat> and again in this hadith, the importance of Friday and the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on this day is re-emphasized where Rasul <coughs> said, amongst the best of your days is Friday. The second ibadah, which I'm sure most of you are somewhat familiar with, if not performing it every week, is the recitation of Surah Al-Kahf. <coughs> Abu Sa'id Al-Khudri reported that the Prophet said, من قرأ سورة الكهف في يوم الجمعة أضاء له من من النور ما بين الجمعتين. Whoever recites سورة الكهف on Friday, a light will shine for him between this Friday and the next Friday. Adding to that, we must realize that to gain the full benefit of this recitation, we must do our best to gain an understanding of the meanings of the verses we read. Each one of us should dedicate some time, if they haven't already, to understanding the translation. And then not only that, but to understand some of the deeper meanings and the themes which are presented in Surah al kahf <clears throat> And this effort doesn't need to be something huge. You don't need to sit one whole day and swift through ten tafasir and figure out what everyone has said about Surah Al-Kahf. Or even read one whole tafsir for like three hours or something. All what you need to do is dedicate maybe ten minutes or so and cover maybe half a page every week. And then in a few weeks you can easily inshallah have a very good understanding of Surah Al-Kahf. And each time you read it, it would be much more meaningful to you. And then not only that, but you have many facts and a much better perspective about this day and the overall uh, religion, inshallah. <coughs> and then Surah Al-Kahf from its significance is that it has a mention of all the fitan, all the tests and tribulations which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests a person in this life. Amongst them in Surah, uh, in, in the beginning of the surah, where the young people of the cave, they are tested, and they are tested in their religion, and trying to keep their religion, and that's one of the fitna, fitna in the religion. And also, in the second story mentioned, the people of the garden, they're tried by their money, money, and the fitna there is related to their money, fitna of wealth. And then there's mention of Iblis and how he is an, an enemy for humanity. And so subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that Iblis himself could be a fitna. And then there's the fitna of knowledge where Musa alayhi salam understood that he knew a lot. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him that no matter how much you know, then there is someone who might know a little bit more than you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed, uh, showed him how Khidr knew more than him, and so we're reminded of the fitna that comes with knowledge. Then finally, with uh, Dhul Qarnayn, we're reminded of the fitna of power, where Dhul Qarnayn is a king, and he has one of the strongest armies, if not the strongest army at that time, and he can command and do whatever he wants, he wants, without anyone objecting to him. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him with giving him power, but subhanAllah, he acted in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him, and his mention is, is, is in the Qur'an, and is being mentioned thousands of years later. But we must be cautious of the fitna of power. The third act of worship, which is uh, mentioned in, in one of the hadith, and also linked to the day of Friday, is um, 
uh, is in the same hadith that was stated in the beginning of the khutbah and it's a section which states وَفِيهِ سَاعَةٌ لَا يَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ فِيهَا الْعَبْدُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا أَعْطَاهُ مَا لَمْ يَسْأَلْ حَرَامًا which translates to and in it there is an hour during which a person does not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything except that Allah will grant it to him so long as he doesn't ask for something that is forbidden. This exact hour, and hour here is used in a way that not literally 60 minutes, but rather some time frame in the day, a short time frame. Uh, and the exact time of this hour is not agreed upon by the scholars. There is difference of opinion. Uh, some said that it's between the two khutbahs, uh, when the imam pauses and there's an opportunity for da'a. Some said it's right before the khutbah and after the adhan of Jum'ah. Some said that it's right before the sunset. And some scholars and tabi'in went with the opinion that it is a time that moves around because there are many hadith indicating that Rasulullah told a sahabi that at this hour and then some other time he tell a different sahabi a different time of the day. So it seems that those scholars went to the opinion that this time moves around in the same way that there is an opinion that Laylatul Qadr moves around amongst the last 10 nights of Ramadan. This hour moves around amongst the hours of the day of Jum'ah. But regardless, we must seek out this time by increasing our dua during this day and making a commit, committed effort to dedicating some time every Jum'ah, whether it's the same time or a different time, so that perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us by allowing us to catch this hour and bless us by accepting our dua and bless us by the additional reward for striving to worship Him and striving to make the dua in the time that He loves. Inna Allahu malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu al-islima Indeed Allah showers His praise upon the Prophet and His angels. O you who believe, invoke Allah's blessings upon him and salute him with greetings of peace. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen inna Muhammad al-Majid. Allahumma barik ala nabina Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakt ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen inna Muhammad al-Majid. O oh Allah, shower your praise on Muhammad and Muhammad's family as you have showered your praise upon Ibrahim and Ibrahim alayhi salam's family. O oh Allah, send your blessings on Muhammad and his family as you sent your blessings upon Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family amongst all nations. Indeed, you are praiseworthy and glorious. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al O oh Lord, give us O oh Lord, give us in this world and in the hereafter uh, your blessings and protect us from the torment of the hellfire. Rabbana, la tuakhidna in nasina wa akhtaqna. Rabbana, wa la tahmil alayna. Islam kama ahmadna wa ala ladina min qablina. Rabbana, wa la tahmilna ma la taqata lana bih. Wa'fu anna, waghfir lana, wa'rhamna. أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب O Lord, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us Grant us your mercy, you are the ever-giving إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيفاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعطيكم لعلكم تذكرون Surely Allah commands justice and good deeds and gener generosity to relatives. He forbids all shameful deeds and injustices and rebellion. He instructs you so that you may be mindful. Remember Allah so that He might, 
so that he may remember you and he will increase your blessings on you. Without doubt, the remembrance of Allah is greater than anything in this life and Allah knows the deeds that you do walk in this salah. <laughs>
واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم and welcome to all our community members and guests Today's speaker was Brother Abdurrahman Siam. Please make God for him. Today is the final day that Sindic is collecting the funds for Pakistani uh, flood victims, so please donate generously. Uh, you can donate at the box there as you leave the prayer hall. There's also uh, cash or check or through the online service. If you park at the Masjid lot, other than for the prayer times, um, you must have a parking sticker or you will be towed. And please, whatever time of day you're parking, do not park in the spots of our neighbors. We have received a number of complaints about this. It makes the message look very bad. It casts a very negative light on Islam. Please don't do it. Uh, please remember that masks are required during the Friday prayer, and they are strongly encouraged every other time. There is a limited supply of masks available for those who need them, but it's better if you bring your own. There's a family play date today at Cold Bear Park in Savoy, and it's scheduled to start at 5.30 p.m. There is a girls empowerment workshop, workshop tonight at the masjid, scheduled to begin at 6.30 p.m. Inshallah. There is a monthly halakha series, Quran in the Life of a Muslim. It's starting tomorrow, September 17th, Inshallah, in the Cynic Library, 5.15 p.m. If you have questions about this, contact Dr. Muhammad al farooq The Lost and Found box is set to be empty today. So on your way out, please check and make sure that none of those items in the lost and found belong to you. Sister Hanin Jabbar and Brother Farhan Sheikh were blessed with a baby girl whom they named Khadija. Please may go out for the entire family. If you work for the University of Illinois as a TA, RA, GA, or a similar kind of category, there is, an there is an organizer from the Graduate Employees Organization, Brother Issam, he is waiting outside the masjid. He would like to meet with you, just to introduce himself to you and give you some information. Lunch today is vegetarian plate or rice and meat from the Dubai Cafe. Suggested donation is $7 in support of the masjid. Cycle here, salam
have one here that we're going to say this one again. When you talk about not disturbing the it would be an excellent opportunity to remind people to turn off their phones. Yes. They should turn them off before they come in, but if they've forgotten, just mention Turn off their phone.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله All praise is due to Allah There is no God but He Whomsoever Allah guides then none can misguide Him And whomsoever Allah misguides due to His own intention then there, can, there cannot be a guide for Him I bear witness that there is no divinity deserving of worship except for Allah alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon him, his pure family, his noble companions, and all those who follow them with righteousness until the day of judgment. Ya muslimun. O you who believe, be mindful of God as, it's, as it is due to, as, as it is his due, and make sure that you devote yourself to him so that you die uh, on Islam. Ya ayyuha nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidah wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa basta minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا O people, be mindful of your Lord who created you from a single soul and from it created its mate and from the pair of them spread countless men and women and be mindful of God in whose name you make requests of one another and beware of severing the ties of kinship for God is always watching over you. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuti' Allah wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azeema O you who believe, be mindful of God and speak in a direct fashion and to good purpose and 
so that He will put your deeds rightfully for you and forgive your sins. And whosoever obeys God and His Messenger, he will truly achieve a great triumph. Verily the most truthful of speech is the Book of Allah and the best guidance and way of life is the guidance of Muhammad The worst of things are those that are newly invented in religion and every newly invented thing in religion is an innovation or bid'ah and every innovation is going astray and every going astray is in fire. <coughs> إِنَّ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ سَيِّدُ الْأَيَّامِ وَأَعْظَمُهَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ أَعْظَمُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْأَضْحَى وَيَوْمِ الْفِطْرِ فِيهِ خَمْسَةُ خِلَالٍ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ آدَمَ وَأَحْبَطَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ آدَمَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَفِيهِ تَوَفَّى اللَّهُ آدَمَ وَفِيهِ سَاعَةٌ لَا يَسْأَلُ اللَّهُ فِيهَا عَبْدٌ فِيهَا الْعَبْدُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا أَعْطَاهُ مَا لَمْ يَسْأَلْ حَرَامًا وَفِيهِ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ <تصفيق> Friday is the best of all days. It is the greatest day in the sight of Allah. It has, it is greater in the sight of Allah than the day of Adha and the day of Fitr. It has five characteristics according to the Hadith. On it, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created Adam, and on it, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent Adam down to earth, and on it, Allah, Allah made Adam pass away. And on it, there is an hour or a short period of time in which a person does not ask Allah for anything except that Allah would grant it to him. As long as what he asks for is not forbidden. And on it, the day of judgment will begin. Based on this hadith and many others like it, which emphasize similar points, we must remember and emphasize the importance of the day of Friday and the khutbah and the salah of Jum'ah. In this khutbah, I have listed a number of reminders for myself and everyone of the significance of this day and the many opportunities for gaining reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has linked to this day and blessed us by informing us of them. May Allah guide us to worship Him and praise Him each Friday and each day in the best of ways in the way He ordained us to do. <clears throat> One of the greatest acts of worship on this day is of course the khutbah of, and the prayer of Jum'ah, which both of which cannot be unlinked from each other and both of which together are made mandatory upon each Muslim male to attend as long as he does not have a religious excuse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha nudiya lis salati min yawm al jumu'ati fas'au ila dhikri allahi wa dharu al bayya thalikum khayrun lakum min kuntum ta'lamoon which translates, O you who believe when the adhan is called for the prayer on the day of Jum'ah then proceed to the remembrance of Allah and leave trade. That is better for you if you only knew. Therefore, when it is time for the Jum'ah prayer and the Adhan is called, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to leave anything that we are doing that has to do with this life, whether it be trade or work or studies or anything. We must leave it for that time and respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's call to worship, which is the Adhan. Additionally, every Friday is a Eid to us Muslims, in the same way that we have two Eids in each year, the day of Friday is the Eid for every week. Friday must be a special occasion in a Muslim's life, due to the importance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the day and the reward which He gave with the Jum'ah prayer. 
a hadith is reported from Ibn Abbas saying, إن هذا يوم عيد جعله الله للمسلمين فمن جاء إلى الجمعة فليغتسل وإن كان طيب فليلمسه فليلمس منه وعليكم بالسواه Ibn Abbas reported that the Messenger of Allah, uh, the, the Messenger of Allah, uh, peace be upon him, said that verily Allah has made this day of Friday a celebration for the Muslims, meaning Aid. Whoever comes to Friday prayer, let him bathe himself and apply perfume if he has it, and use the miswak. The Prophet ﷺ also said in a similar hadith, whoever washes his head and body, meaning performing ghusl on Friday, then sets out early. It is, is, present, <coughs> is present at the beginning of the khutbah and is close to the imam then listens attentively for every, for every step that he takes, he will have the reward of fasting and praying qiyam for one whole year. Therefore the importance of listening to the imam very attentively and coming close to the imam, sitting close to the imam, facing the body towards the imam and not looking left and right is emphasized. Additionally coming early to the masjid is emphasized so that we can attain this great reward which is equivalent to the reward of fasting and praying qiyam for one whole year. And then when we are in the masjid, we must sit in a way that does not harm others or cause obstructions or distractions. Part of that is if the phone is not on silent, putting it on silent, not distracting ourselves and that's part of paying attention to the imam. And we must try to face the khatib again, as, as, as I said. And the importance of att listening attentively is re-emphasized in even another hadith, where Rasul says, if you say to your companion, listen attentively, on a Friday, when the imam is delivering the khutbah, then you have engaged in idle speech. Meaning that even if you turn to the person sitting next to you and say, Listen to the Imam while the khutbah is going on. Even then Rasul said that you're, you've engaged in idle speech because instead of listening to, to the khutbah yourself, you've distracted yourself and you might have distracted someone else by, by talking during the khutbah and you've lost the reward of listening attentively to the khutbah. So even saying to someone else, listen attentively, is said by Rasul as idle speech. <clears throat> Additionally, when we sit in the masjid, we must uh, make sure that we free up any space for anyone else if the space is tight. So even if it, it, it means that our space would be less, we should free up the extra space so that everyone can come closer to the front and so that everyone can hear the imam properly and gain their reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ تَفَسَّحُوا فِي الْمَجَالِسِ يَفْسَحِ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you are told in the gatherings to create space, then create space for, for other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create space for you. <coughs> May Allah guide us to all what He loves and keep us away from all what He dislikes. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد In this second section of the khutbah I will briefly touch upon three acts of worship beyond the Friday prayer itself that are great acts of worship on any day and the reward on any day is, is very significant but when 
they're performed on Fridays, their reward is multiplied, and they have special, a special reward. So performing them on Friday is encouraged. The first of those acts is mentioned in uh, a hadith where Rasulullah says, Inna afdal ayyamikum yawm al-jum'ah fa'akthiru alayya min al-salati fee fa'inna salatakum ma'udatun alayhi where Rasulullah says, amongst the best of your days is Friday and on that, on, on that day, pray to Allah to exalt my mention for your supplications are presented to me. So again, this hadith reminds us of how blessed and how honored this day is in the sight of Allah. And then Rasulullah reminds us to increase the salawat, sending salawat on him. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabina Muhammad. And he reminds us that not only will we, uh, will we attain an extra reward for increasing the salawat on this day, but we will also be honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that he will present our salawat to Rasul sallallahu <coughs> Therefore, we must take a conscious effort to send salawat on the Prophet on this day and um, emphasize and try to set up a routine where we send salawat on the Prophet وسلم, every Friday. Perhaps a good suggestion is as you walk to the masjid and you walk back home from the masjid that you perform salawat and dhikr instead of worldly talk because that is one of the times where you are rewarded for each step and dhikr puts you in the correct in the correct uh, mindset for the salat. <coughs> the second ibadah which I'm sure most of you are very familiar with if not performing every Friday is recitation of Surah Al-Kahf. Abu Sa'id ibn uh, Abu Sa'id al-Qudri reported <coughs> that the Rasul Sallallahu said, مَنْ قَرَأَ سُورَةَ الْكَهْفِ فِي يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ أَضَاءَ لَهُ مِنَ النُّورِ مَا بَيْنَ الْجُمْعَةِينَ Whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf on a Friday, a light will shine for him between this Friday and the next. Adding to that, we must realize that to gain the full benefit of the recitation of Surah Al-Kahf, we must do our best to gain an understanding for the meanings of the verses. That means, not only dedicating some time to reading the translation, but also taking some extra time to learn the deeper meanings and, <coughs> and some of the themes that occur in the surah. And we do not have to uh, take a whole day and read 10 tafsir, or take three hours and read the complete tafsir in one sitting. All what we need to do is if, if we don't have time, then spend five to 10 minutes and cover half a page every Friday. And then in a matter of few weeks, inshallah ta'ala, we would have a much better understanding of Surah Al-Kahf. And every time we read it, it will be much more meaningful. And we can actually act upon it and learn something from the many lessons in the Surah. The Surah is very important because it reminds us of many of the fitan, if not all the major types of fitan or trials and tribulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a human through in his life. In the first story of Surah Al-Kahf, the people of the cave are tried with the fitna of their religion. They're put in a situation where holding on to their religion is very tough. That's the first fitna which is fitna in religion. The sec in the second story, um, where the people of the garden are tested, they're tested with the fitna of wealth. They both have wealth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests them if they would act with it properly or not. And that's a fitna which each and every one of us will experience at some time. Then we're reminded that the shaitan is an enemy to us with the story of shaitan and Adam alayhi salam. And we're reminded that there are the fitan which come from shaitan or the fitan of shaitan. Then in the story of Musa السلام, we're reminded of the fitna of knowledge where Musa السلام, thought he had 
a lot of, well, he did have a lot of knowledge, but he thought he knew everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded him by making him meet Khidr alayhi salam. And he saw that no matter how much knowledge you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives someone else some other type of knowledge. So you cannot know everything. And that's the fitna of knowledge. Then, finally, in the last story, uh, Dhuhr name is mentioned. And we see the fitna of power. And the Qarnayn acts in a correct way. He's given all the power and armies and wealth, but he acts in a way that he's God conscious. And even though he can do whatever he wants and no one will stop him, he acts properly and he's praised for that thousands of years later, again and again in the Quran. And then the last act of worship, which um, is linked to this blessed day is <coughs> mentioned in a hadith which we stated or I stated in the beginning of the khutbah and specifically I'm referring to the section which says وَفِيهِ سَاعَةٌ لَا يَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ فِيهَا فِيهَا الْعَبْدُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا أَعْطَاهُ مَا لَمْ يَسْأَلْ حَرَامًا which translates to and in it there is an hour during which a person does not ask Allah Taala for anything except he will be given or it will be given to him so long as what he asks for is not something that is prohibited so when we say the an hour it means not 60 minutes but a short period of time and the exact time where this hour occurs is not agreed, agreed upon by the scholars there are many opinions in this matter some of the scholars said that it is between the two khutbahs where the imam pauses and others said it is before the khutbah begins and other scholars said it's right before sunset on the day of Friday and other scholars said the time changes every Friday and moves around in the same way that the, some scholars said that Laylatul Lay Qadr moves around in the last 10 days and it is within the last 10 days of Ramadan, but each Ramadan it might be in a different uh, night. Similarly, some scholars have said that this hour moves around because there are many ahadith where Rasulullah tells the Sahabi that such and such is this hour, and then in the, in, in the, at a later time he tells a different Sahabi a different time. So that some scholars concluded that this time moves around. But regardless, we must seek out this blessed time each Friday by making a committed effort and increasing our du'a throughout the day. And perhaps each Friday we can select a certain time where we diligently perform du'a and dhikr so that perhaps Allah subhanahu ta'ala might bless us and we might uh, take advantage of this uh, special hour which Allah subhanahu ta'ala has informed us about. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa taala showers His praise upon the Prophet and His angels pray for him. O you who believe, invoke Allah's blessings upon him and salute him with greetings of peace. اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم. وبارك اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. O oh Allah, shower your praise on Muhammad and Muhammad's family uh, as you have showered your praise on Ibrahim and Ibrahim's family. O oh Allah, send your blessings on Muhammad and Muhammad's family as you have sent your blessings on Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family amongst all nations. You are indeed praiseworthy and glorious. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. Our Lord give us good in this world and in the hereafter and protect us from the torment of the fire. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب 
our Lord, do not leave our hearts, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us and grant us your mercy. You are the ever giving. Inna Allah ya'mu bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal bagh ya'adukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Surely Allah commands justice and good deeds and generosity to relatives and He forbids all shameful deeds, injustice and rebellion. He instructs you so that you may be mindful. أُذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ يَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوهُ عَلَى نِعَمِهِ يَزِدْكُمْ وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ يَكْبَرْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَسْنَعُونَ Remember Allah so that He may remember you and be grateful to Him. He, he will increase His blessings on you. Without doubt the remembrance of Allah is greater than anything in this life and Allah knows that the deeds that you do. Fatima Salah. <laughs> وَاذْكُرْ اللَّهَ أَكْبَرُ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ أَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ حَيَّ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ حَيَّ عَلَى الْفَلَاحِ قَدْ قَامَتِ الصَّلَاةُ قَدْ قَامَتِ الصَّلَاةُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ
يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون الله سمع الله لمن حمده السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 